when employees think about AI, do they think about lifting the burden, unleashing creativity, or is it something like, am I going to lose my job? You know, the answer is both, but it turns out that their positivity actually outweighs their fears right now. And that's those are some of the findings from our most recent report that we published yesterday. Just to back up for a second, 31,000 people across 31 countries we surveyed to understand how they felt. First off, the number that caught my attention, 64 percent of people telling us that they just don't have the time or energy to get their jobs done. When we looked at Asia PAC specifically, that number jumped up to 72 percent. So there's something going on there. Um, then we asked them how they felt about AI. 49% did say, hey, I'm afraid it's going to take my job. But again, when we asked them, well, would you use it at work? 70% worldwide told us that they would offload as much as they could in the workplace just because they felt like there was such a burden of work right now. How much is AI being incorporated in America's workplace right now? It's early days. It's very early days. In March, we introduced a brand new product called Microsoft Copilot. Um, it, this product is just in testing for us right now. So we have uh, initially 20 customers that have been using it. Yesterday, we announced that we're expanding to an additional 600 customers worldwide. So we're excited to have it be used more broadly. But it's definitely early days. I can say for my own usage, though, I've been using it for a couple of months. This is a product that once you get your hands on it, you don't want to give it back. It helps you summarize emails, write emails, summarize long documents. It makes meetings you know, just a totally different experience. So there is a set of capabilities that once you get a taste of it, you realize it's going to change the way you do your work. Jared, there's so much excitement when it comes to AI at the moment. You just have to see how concentrated uh, investors are in the sector, in, in the Chinese market, for example. What are the pitfalls and where do you see weaknesses that still really need to be worked on before we see mainstream, reliable, consistent application? It's a great question. These large language models, I think the world came to know them first last November with ChatGPT. These large language models are pretty incredible at answering questions across a broad domain. But when it comes to answering business questions, specific questions about your business, about results, about things that could help you get your job done, the general purpose models aren't good enough. And so what we are seeing companies do, including what we're doing with our products, is we are grounding the large language models with additional company data. So we take your data, that's your emails, your calendar, that's your financial data. We send it to the large language models and let them reason across it. In those circumstances, it does quite well. It's not perfect, however, so when we introduced it in March, we did help people understand that it still makes mistakes. So I like to think of it as an assistant that's incredibly knowledgeable. It's excellent at kind of going across a large body of information, but you can't trust it 100 percent. You have to check the answers it gives you. How much consolidation? Uh, and, and, I, and I know you obviously come from one point of view, but given how many players there are, we're just talking about SoftBank, for example, coming in with its version, just myriad players at the moment jostling for market share. How much consolidation do you see ultimately? Well, the, the moment is an interesting moment because it's a bit of let a thousand flowers bloom. Everyone is talking about AI in the context of their applications or their web services, their cloud services. Ultimately, over time, our sense is that users are going to gravitate to, to the use of AI, what we call these co-pilots, that kind of aggregate the greatest amount of information. It's, it's pretty tiresome to think that you'd have to go from one co-pilot to another to another and know which one to ask the questions. So ultimately, we think this is going to come down to user choice and our sense from the testing is that users are going to go to those that really have a broad view of business and that's what we hope to do you know with the with capturing emails calendar kind of a broad swath of things and then being able to integrate line of business systems we hope that we can give users kind of access to a large enough amount of data that they get some really useful answers